I'm throwing out everything I thought I knew about track cleaning. How I virtually eliminated track cleaning on my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a previous video some time ago here on this channel, as well as several videos and discussions that I've had on Facebook, I've talked in the past about the subject of track cleaning. Now, this may be the most hotly debated, the most controversial topic in the whole world of model railroading, as many people have opinions with regard to uh, different products to use or not to use and the processes that they use to clean track for their model railroads. Now, I have been looking into this subject for some time. Uh, my curiosity was really piqued uh, over the topic of the use or the problematic use of isopropyl alcohol, something many of us have used in the past and many of us still use to clean our track. One particular video by Fish Plate Films really got my attention and got me thinking about whether I should continue using IPA or whether I should be using something else. You're putting it on your track. Don't do it. By the way, you can find a link to that video in the description down below. Well, as I did some investigation, I have found some information that I didn't know that seems to be the best kept secret in model railroading about how to clean track and what to use in order to make our track work the way we want it to. And I'm going to tell you everything that I've learned right after this. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Like many people, for years I struggled with the frustration of cleaning my track, getting the trains running nice and smoothly, only to find that just a few days later they skipped and stuttered because the track was again dirty. This can be an unbelievably frustrating thing, especially when you have people come over to do some operations or to see your trains run. Now, for ages, I have listened to a variety of opinions and a variety of reasons for why we should or shouldn't use certain products or certain processes to clean track. So as I'm apt to do, I took all of these different voices and different thoughts and did some real investigation for myself into not only the opinions, but into the real science behind track cleaning and what perhaps are the best products and the best process, processes for doing this. The result is that I have completely changed my mind about track cleaning. Now, I haven't changed my mind regarding abrasives. Things like Bright Boys and track rubbers, uh, these things leave micro scratches on the surface of your rails, which ultimately is really, really bad for your rails. They can be healed by burnishing the rails with a, a, a small piece of steel, like a steel washer, but that's a lot of work to have to do in order to use an abrasive track cleaner. Why not avoid the injury to the rails in the first place by finding a different process? Well, I have discovered a, a process that I have begun to use that is virtually eliminating the need for ongoing repeated cleaning on my layout, and I'm going to show, share with you exactly what I've learned. There are two key pieces of information that I found from two different sources that I've combined together into one process of track treatment that I'm finding is working very well. The per first piece of information came from Joe Fugate in his column Publishers Musings in the May 2019 online issue of Model Railroad Hobbyist. I'll uh, post a link to that article in the description down below so you can read it for yourself. In, in that article, uh, Joe talked about the frustration that we all have with the black gunk that appears on our rails and seems to be there every single time we go to clean our track. Now, many people will refer to this black gunk as, as dirt and contaminants. Uh, in, in fact, while there certainly may be a bit of dirt and dust uh, involved there with the track, primarily what that black gunk is, is metal oxides that are the result of oxidation of our rails. Now, this oxidation happens over time, just like any metal will oxidize when left to the, to the open air. 
But the real uh, culprit for uh, that causes a problem for oxidation for us is a process known as micro-arcing whenever we run our trains uh, over our layout. Micro-arcing is like tiny little sparks or tiny little bolts of lightning that happen as the wheels turn and come in contact with the track. And as the wheel approaches the track or as it leaves contact with the track, uh, the electricity flowing through that circuit, that contact makes a little bit of an arc or a little bit of a spark and, and that leaves little micro pits in the surface of our rail. Now this isn't something that we can see or feel but if you say the word micro pitting or micro scratches or micro abrasions to uh, the rails on our, our model railroads uh, I think it gets all of our attention. The problem is that these micro pits and micro abrasions are great places for uh, oxidation to take place and for oxides to reside, which is part of the problem that we have with our model railroad tracks that causes them to run unreliably. So understanding the problem of oxidation and the problem of this micro pitting that happens that promotes more o oxidation on our uh, railroad tracks, we have to ask ourselves the question, what is our real goal for our treatment of our tracks? And we talk about track cleaning, but, but ultimately having clean track isn't our ultimate goal. We, we've never thought in the back of our mind, I hope that so-and-so comes over and sees my model railroad and says, my, what nice, clean-looking track you have. Uh, honestly, we probably don't really care whether our track is clean. What we care about is reliable running, which is the result of good electrical contact between the wheels and the rails. Now, obviously, the reason we clean is to remove dirt, contaminants, and oxidation that can inhibit good electrical contact and cause unreliable running. But what we really want to accomplish is good conductivity. And as a result of that, we clean our track, we do things to try to reduce oxidation, and to reduce micro-arcing. Those should be our goals in order to produce reliable running through good electrical contact contact. Now, when we talk about cleaning products, there are some things that we need to say uh, about those cleaning products. First of all, some people will, will say negative things about certain products because they leave a residue behind on the rails. Well, that's only partially the problem that we have. Because the fact is that any product we use on our rails is going to leave some residue behind. The real question is, what are the properties of the residue that is left behind? That's the question that we need to ask. Because the residue that is left behind gets into those little micro pits and, and molecularly remains in the rails, in contact with the rails, and embedded in the rails for a long period of time. So we need to make sure that whatever we are putting on our track has properties that will promote smooth running and good electrical contact. Getting back to Joe Fugate's column, in that column he talked about the difference between polar and non-polar products that we use on our tracks. Now, polar products are products that molecularly have an electron charge. And so the, the residue that remains behind after we use these products in the micro pits and the micro abrasions on our rail, because they have an electron charge, when they are in the presence of an electrical current, like that between our rails and the wheels when we run our trains, it promotes micro arcing, which promotes oxidation. That is not what we want. Now, understanding that, we need to understand what are some of the products that are highly polar that sometimes we use. One of the most highly polar things we could ever put on our uh, track is water. Water is extremely polar. That's why water is such an oxidizer of metals. If you leave water in contact with steel, uh, over time it's going to rust. Well, the same is true on our rail. So water or products that contain water are going to promote micro arcing and are going to promote oxidation. Isopropyl alcohol is also highly polar, as are things like MEK and acetone. All of these are highly polar things and thus are not great products to use on our rails. They're going to produce micro arcing. They're going to produce uh, more uh, oxidation on our rails.
And in fact, some of the products that are promoted as being really, really good by those who don't like IPA are things that we need to be careful of. For example, CRC is a company that makes a number of products. Some of them are really good for our rails. We'll talk about those in a few moments. Some of them are really bad. One of the products they make is called their QD Con Contact Cleaner. And this particular product is highly polar and thus not an ideal solution to use for cleaning our tracks. Nonpolar products, on the other hand, also molecularly get into those micro pits and micro abrasions in our rail, but they will help reduce the problem of micro arcing and will help protect against oxidation over time. Back to the topic of CRC, one product that they make that is nonpolar and that could be used very safely on our rails is their contact cleaner with protectant. Now I hear a lot of people talking about using CRC 226, but 226 is actually moderately polar. You would be much better to use the contact cleaner with protectant if you're going to use a CRC product. Another product that has been promoted as kind of the magic formula at times in the past is wall clipper oil. Many of you have heard about people using wall clipper oil, and that may or may not have various problems of its own, but the good thing about wall clipper oil is it is nonpolar. Some other cleaners that we might use that are nonpolar that probably you have in your arsenal already are things like turpentine and mineral spirits. And also WD-40 con contact cleaner, not regular WD-40, but their contact cleaner product. For me personally, I've decided that for the cleaning that I'm doing, I'm using regular mineral spirits. It's a non-polar product. It's easy to get a hold of. I already have it on hand all of the time. Uh, it it's, doesn't have a lot of odor to it. It doesn't leave a, 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 a lubricant or a slick surface behind. It just leaves a nice, clean track. Having talked about the difference between polar and non-polar cleaners, we, we understand that we're far better off to use a non-polar kind of cleaner like mineral spirits than something that is polar. But wouldn't it be interesting if we could get something into those micro pits and micro abrasions that not only didn't promote micro arcing, but that actually promoted good electrical conductivity? Well, that leads me to the second piece of information that I want to share with you today. And this was something that I learned from my friend John Atchison in Kansas City. He turned me onto a product called No Ox ID. Uh, specifically, it's called No Ox ID A Special. And that last phrase, A Special, is short for A Special Electrical Contact Grease. Nox ID is a, a grease-like substance that actually promotes electrical conductivity. Now, when I first learned about Nox, I assumed this was a new product. I had never heard of it before. It must be something brand new that people are using. But what I've learned is that actually it's been used by some in model railroading for many years. In fact, the earliest mention of it that I could find was from an article by Lynn Westcott written all the way back in 1965. So this is a product that's been around for a long time. It's made by a company called Sankim, and it literally is a product that's made to help protect protect against oxidation and to promote electrical conductivity. Now, I know there are some who are immediately going to say, you're going to put grease on your rails? So that, that's a lubricant. It's going to reduce traction. It's going to cause all kinds of problems with your locomotives pulling. And I understand what you're saying, but that's not true if it's used correctly, if it's used the way it's intended to be used. What we want with Nox ID is a microscopic layer between the rails and the wheels on our model railroads. This will treat the micro pits, it will help reduce micro arcing, uh, it will help protect against oxidation, and it will help to promote good electrical conductivity. So the process that has been promoted, and as I have worked on it and tried it, uh, I've discovered works really, really well, goes like this. First, you want to start with clean track. So get your mineral spirits and a good, soft, uh, non-lint cloth and clean your rails really, really well. Go over them multiple times until you stop getting that black gunk, that old oxidation, off of your rails. If it's been a while since you've cleaned your rails, you may even want to go and vacuum them first just to remove dust uh, and other debris and contaminants from your rails. 
At the same time, uh, it's a really good time right now to clean your locomotive wheels as well as we're preparing uh, to, to treat not only the rails, but also the wheels on our locomotive. Uh, while you're in this process, might also be a good time to clean your rolling stock wheels. Uh, the idea here is going to be that when this process is done, we may not have to do that again for a very long time. Isn't that exciting? Now, with the rails and the locomotive wheels cleaned, apply the No Ox ID a special to the rails. A very thin layer, a layer thin enough that you can't see it, by simply getting a little bit of the grease, a residue of it, on your finger and rubbing it over the rails. You want to make sure that you get it on all of the rails, but you don't want it to apply so much that you can see it or that you see excess on the sides of the rails. Just a nice, very thin layer. Now you want to take your locomotives and run them over all of the rails, run each one of your locomotives and run it for several minutes uh, so that the wheels on your locomotive get treated from the rails as well. Once that is done, come back with a clean soft cloth and wipe down the rails to remove any excess uh, no ox ID. You don't want to scrub the rails here, just, just wipe them softly to remove any excess. You also may want to take some time at this point to use a micro brush and clean any excess that might be on the locomotive wheels as well. Once all this is done, just run your trains like normal. You're going to find that the trains run really, really smoothly and that this will last a long time. It, the problem of, of stopping and stuttering, for me at least, did not return after a few days. In fact, it didn't return after several weeks. And I've read testimonials about model railroaders who have used this process and who have done nothing more than a, than a quick vacuum to remove dust on their tracks for five to seven years. Now, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to not have to clean track for five years? Now you need to understand that once you've accomplished this process, you're not going to want to go back and use cleaners on your track. If you use a cleaner, you're going to remove the no-walks ID and then you're going to have to repeat this process of treating the track all over again. Simply wipe dust away with a soft cloth or vacuum it away should be all that you need. The goal here, again, is to leave a microscopic layer of no-walks ID on the rail to promote good electrical con uh, conductivity. Now, one caveat here, this is probably not the process you want to use if you're running steam locomotives with traction tires. I have seen conflicting reports, but personally, I don't think that this type of a product and the rubber of the traction tires are a good combination. So if that is you, then you may be want to looking for a, a, a different process other than the NOAX ID. Although the non-polar cleaners like the mineral spirits are still a great idea, you still want to stay away from those polar solvents. Now, there's some great documentation online from Sankim about this product, which talks about a number of its various uses, including its use in model railroading, as one of the owners and founders of this company and of this product happens to be a model railroader and has used it himself. And I'm going to link that document in the description down below as well. Now, if no walks is something that you want to try, and I'm going to be honest, I highly recommend it. I think you'll be very happy with it if you follow the process that I outlined. Now, I'm going to include a link to no walks ID, a special, as my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below if you'd like to try some out. And while you're down there, you may want to check out the other great links that are there uh, that are available to you as well. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?